we now are in the midst of probably one of the worst plagues on the U.S. soil. And it's impacting white America more than anyone else. And now we see a totally different response from lawmakers because the people look like them. Now, no one should go to jail and it's a public health issue and, oh, it wouldn't be right to make this a criminal, this is not a criminal situation. Now we have the drug courts and Trump put together a committee. Well, none of these things were done during the crack epidemic. You were angry and you wanted black people in jail. There's a lot of resentment. And, and here's the problem with America. America never wants to right their wrongs. Never want to right their wrongs, ever. And they let problems linger and marinate for years and years and years. And then they want to know why there are a lot of bitter people. And saying the usual go back to Africa and all that lame ass shit that you say, that resolves nothing. Okay, it resolves nothing. And it doesn't answer. Why now? And why are all these um, policies that you're putting in place just really impact white drug addicts and no one else? And that's the problem with the policies. They're only really written in a way where it's helping the white addict. But anybody else in this country of color that's caught with drugs, they're still going to jail. And they're not getting drug court. They're getting criminal court. But let's get into the article, and I will leave the link to this article in the description box from The Hill, November 13th. 2017 opioids became a crisis because they kill so many white Americans and that should be the title of the century right there the United States is in the midst of an epidemic level plague of overdoses one that is accelerating each year nationally overdose rates have now surpassed motor vehicle accidents as the leading cause of injury related deaths in the country in 2016 the overdose death toll in the U.S. surpassed American deaths during the entire Vietnam War and lives lost at the peak of the AIDS crisis, with an estimate of 59,000 people succumbing to overdose. This is far from the first time the problematic substance use has had a devastating impact on communities across the country. But our response is distinctly different than during previous eras. Heroin, cocaine, and other substances have never discriminated, but it's clear our policy response certainly has. Throughout the 1970s, heroin overdoses ravished Harlem and other cities that were facing deindustrialization, deinvestment, and demographic upheaval. The response was harsh policing in the Rockefeller drug laws in New York, which established draconian mandatory minimum sentences were then adopted across the country, absent from lawmakers. Um, and, and that's true. You know, the lawmakers were nowhere to be found. And when they were around, they just wanted to pile on more um, laws to get you rounded up and arrested. They were not helping the situation at all like they're trying to now. In the 1980s and 90s, communities were decimated by the lack of economic opportunity experience the, the brunt of what became defined as the crack era. Again, our country deployed law enforcement and prisons to interact with people experiencing deep trauma and medical issues and causing the problem too. The U.S. government caused that problem. Um, 
Instead, the Senate enhanced penalty for people who were selling small amounts of drugs and sentencing disparities of 100 to 1 for crack versus powder cocaine. Now, with the overdose plague becoming a mainstream conversation, there has been a shift in the narrative. When prior drug problems were seen as affecting primarily communities of color, government intervention focused on increased policing and criminalization. Current policy responses now that predominantly white suburban or urban communities are perceived as the hardest hit by overdose invoke a distinctly public health response, a kinder, gentler approach that has politicians proclaiming we can't arrest our way out of this problem. Well, you sure didn't see it that way during the crack cocaine era. There is widespread and growing recognition that policies that deny people's basic humanity, separate families, and rip apart communities do nothing to stem the tide of overdose or support public health. Yet, the ripple effects of the criminalization approach in terms of lack of infrastructure and frameworks for treatment haunt us in this current crisis. And it's always going to haunt you. It's going to always go, it's going to haunt you because America never want to correct their wrongs. You never want to do it. So I see this thing only getting worse for you. You're not going to turn it around. You got millions out here abusing these drugs. You can't control it. That's why it's not going away. Naloxone, the drug that can reverse an opioid overdose, was uh, approved by the FDA in the 1970s. But it wasn't widely deployed until the mid-2000s. That's because they were using it on white people. That's why. That's why. And is just getting into the hands of first responders in the last several years. It is absolutely devastating to consider how many lives could have been saved over the last 40 years if people who were dying of overdose in the 1970s had mattered enough to policymakers. That's true. That is very true. Likewise, rural and suburban communities are feeling the impact of opioid dramatically and reeling from lack of sufficient access to treatment programs because drug problems were seen as an issue that only affect other communities methadone and, you know, the drugs that they use for therapy, um, you know, people were blocked out, you know, because of course we know they did not offer any type of rehab to crack addicts or even back in the seventies when heroin was big in Harlem and in certain cities around the country. Um, okay. Now, Communities are clamoring for effective treatment options and providers are scrambling to establish caregiving facilities. We cannot afford to let this moment of compassion remain skin deep. Parallel to the tide of compassion response across the country, we've also seen a push for wrong-headed drug-induced homicide laws that again trade in dangerous stereotypes. We must truly, um, we must be truly vigilant as this federal administration and policymakers in state houses and city hall try to claw their way back to punitive approach of the war on drugs. Caring rhetoric must be backed by implementing a full range of evidence-based solutions that can save lives and ensuring that all communities have access to responsive treatment options, which we don't. To this day, if a black guy is walking around with a little marijuana, he is still going to jail. It, it, there is no treatment, there is no compassion, there is no drug court for him. 
So, you know, they have these laws, but just watch how they're implementing the laws where it's now a public health issue. Everything is aimed towards the white addict and nothing is aimed towards anybody else in this country with a drug problem. Just watch how they're implementing this whole thing. The opioid plague has underscored what we have always known about drug use and misuse. Addiction is not specifically a racial group or economic class, but it affects of supposedly race neutral or colorblind drug policy have had a desperate impact on communities of color. Congress need new thinking in drug policy that owns the truth and atones for the harm done. And I agree with that. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit on that notification bell. Peace, family.